On one fateful Sunday in January 1999, we inexplicably found ourselves in a New Jersey therapist's office with the leader of the local mafia. Each week, millions of people would tune in to watch Tony and his family balance crime with life and explore mental health stigmas and overall change television forever. But how did Sunday get to be this legendary night of television? Let's take it back. Since the dawn of television, Sundays have always been a pretty solid day for quality programming. Networks knew that this was their one day to capitalize on the entire family being home. On Sunday, February 9, 1964, 73 million people danced around their TVs as the Beatles performed on The Ed Sullivan Show. They spent the next decade watching Walt Disney's wonderful world of color, Lassie, Alfred Hitchcock Presents, Bonanza, some of the biggest shows of all time aired on this night. But the tone was vastly different. It was clean, low impact, family-friendly content. As we entered the 80s and 90s, Sunday nights lost a little steam, gained The Simpsons, but in terms of game-changing storytelling, it was a little lackluster. Which brings us back to 1999. When HBO executives were deciding on which night to air their new drama, they decided to premiere it on what was at the time one of the least popular nights for TV. Adult dramas were nowhere to be found on a Sunday night. It was a risk, but they figured at the very least there was no competition so they wouldn't have to beat another show. As we all know, this decision paid off handsomely. The Sopranos became one of the biggest television hits of all time. This was due, in part, to its Sunday dominance. Over the next two decades, every important show that would have people exclaim, now this show is the next Sopranos, would find itself airing on a Sunday. Sunday would remain the day with the highest amount of viewers, 125 million people on average in 2015, even throughout the streaming service takeover of recent years. Obviously, it isn't about choosing a night without competition anymore. Sunday has become the most competitive night on TV by far. Come 8 o'clock, it is a bloodbath. So, why are networks still cramming their highest rated TV shows on this one night? In truth, it all comes down to prestige. Because of the pattern started by The Sopranos, it's now a Hollywood accepted notion that your network's signature drama needs to air on Sunday in order for people to know it's your signature drama. This idea is solidified by shows that, after originally airing on a weeknight, eventually switched to Sunday nights in order to get better ratings. Two examples are The Good Wife, which had its first two seasons on a Tuesday, and Mad Men, which came from Thursdays. Both shows saw improved ratings after the switch. Some networks have also found that it's mainly important to air on Sunday, but it's less important that the show is actually consumed on that day. Homeland, which saw millions of viewers a week, actually found that only 32% of its views came on its Sunday air date. Others eventually caught up the following few nights from their DVR or from the Showtime app. But there's more going on here than just TV executives arbitrarily deciding on a day that's the primetime day for television. There's deep psychology at work too. The prevalence of important Sunday night television is due in part to the concept of missed social opportunities. Humans are, as we know, deeply social creatures. We're motivated by a desire to be a part of a tribe. When Game of Thrones airs a new episode on a Sunday night, it's expected that a fair number of your coworkers are going to want to talk about it on Monday. Or Tuesday or Wednesday, or Thursday, or Friday. There's a five-day window for social opportunities spurred by this common interest. The opportunity lost by not watching it on Sunday can be detrimental to our survival, or at least that's what our brains tell us. A show that airs on a Thursday only has one-fifth of the social opportunity, so the stakes are much less. But Sundays are notable for another reason as well. Audiences are emotionally vulnerable on Sundays, says media curator Ron Simon. They are primed to react strongly to dramatic storylines. This is due to the actually totally scientifically verified phenomenon known as the Sunday scaries. That's right, that feeling you get every Sunday, the dread of the impending tasks of your work week or school week, is being weaponized against you in the name of good television. It's no coincidence that Sunday night television is nearly entirely made up of dramas. Dramas famous for twists and turns and reveals and deaths and emotional gut punches. Our brains are increasingly vulnerable to these devices on the precipice of the week. If The Red Wedding had premiered on a Wednesday, while still horrifically scarring, would have had less of an emotional impact, psychologists say. It's also important to note that Sunday Scaries is a very American phenomenon. In a recent survey done by Monster.com, it was revealed that 76% of American adults experience some form of Sunday anxiety. That's a pretty significant chunk of the people who have to set an alarm on Monday morning. It seems even bigger when you compare it to the international average, which is only about 46%. And when you know it, other countries' television programs are far less beholden to the Sunday night schedule. 
For the last 20 years, airing a show on Sunday is a matter of prestige. It's a message to audiences that this show is super good. It's a badge of trust from the network more than anything. Weekdays are reserved for procedurals and sitcoms. Weeknights are for comedies, but due to a pattern started in the New Jersey therapist's office in 1999 and carried onward with a little emotional manipulation, Sundays are for Emmy winners. Binge and streaming culture is definitely changing the game, reviving dead formats, putting a significant dent in the weekly schedule. Game of Thrones is probably the final show in the golden age of television that started 20 years ago. Its first season began before the switch to streaming and it's one of the final shows that demands to be watched live. After it ends, we'll be in a whole new world. Most of us have already traded in our cable boxes for Netflix accounts, so it will definitely be interesting to see how our Sunday nights change even further in the near future.